Hi, it's Dawn from Ninja Bunny Crochet. Today I have for us to do this really cute, cuddly, baby bunting um, snuggly sack. This is for sizes, it's a newborn three months. It's got a 22 inch circumference. It's 17 inch, 17 and a half inches long. If you wanted to make one a little bit longer, all you would need to do is just add a few more rows into the into the length. You can make it um, longer very easily. Um, let me drop the camera down and I'll talk about the yarn that I used, um, the hook sizes, and um, the stitch gauge and anything else that you might need to make this snuggly sack or baby bunting. I use Premier Puzzle Yarn. This is 100% acrylic yarn. It is a bulky 5 yarn. It comes with 328 yards or 300 meters. It is a 7 ounce skein of yarn. This yarn is, the color is called, where's the color? Um, color, color, Cat's Cradle. You don't have to use this brand yarn. You can use any Bulky 5 yarn that you choose. But I would recommend a Bulky 5 for this project. I also used around the collar edge. That fuzzy yarn is called Bernat Pipsqueak. You won't use a lot of it, so if you have something um, of this novelty yarn that you used for a, another project, you'll just need a little bit of the, this yarn. Um, I don't have the exact yardage on it. Um, this is the ball I used, and you can tell I hardly used any out of it at all. Again, this is also a bulky five. This is 100% polyester. This comes in a 101 yard ball. This particular color is called vanilla. So again, this is the, um, you don't have to use this brand yarn, but this is the one that I did use. You will need a J 6.0 millimeter hook, a pair of scissors. You'll want a yarn needle. I use two different sizes. I have this uh, needle to weave in the yarn, and then I had a larger eye hook, a uh, larger needle with a large eye on it for the pipsqueak yarn. And you might want to have some stitch markers on hand. Um, I always find them to be very helpful. Um, you will definitely need at least one stitch marker for this project because you are going to be working in continuous rounds. You don't have to use these fancy stitch markers. You could use uh, just a piece of yarn, um, just in a different color. The stitch gauge for this project is three single crochets per inch, three single crochets per row. So you'll have three rows of single crochet will be an inch, three single crochets um, will be one inch. So you have a one inch square, three single crochets for the row, three single crochets um, across. So once you have all of your supplies, let's get started. To start the baby bunting, we're going to start with a chain of two. We're going to put six single crochets into that first chain. You can use the magic ring technique if you'd like. I just feel it works better this way with the bulkier yarn. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, and six. So make sure you got six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now we're going to be working continuous rounds, so we're not going to be slip stitching. So we're going to, for round two, we're going to go right into that first stitch and place two single crochets. So one, two, 
and we're going to put two single crochets all the way around. So then three, four, and five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Then that should be eleven and twelve. So you should have a total of twelve single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Now round three, we're just going to put one single crochet into each stitch around. If you need to use a stitch marker at this point, go ahead and use one. I usually just count it out until I get up to round five is when I usually start to use a stitch marker. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And that would be the end of round three. Now round four, we're going to be using, we're going to be doing two single crochets and each stitch around. So we're going to have 24. So we're going to go into that next stitch and put two single crochets. So one and two. Then three, four, five, 22, 23, and 24. If you want to double check that, just count back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Now at this point, this is when I would bring out my stitch markers because the next round, round five, is when we're going to get a little bit more complicated. So let's grab a stitch marker. You don't have to use these interlocking ones. You can just use a piece of yarn that's in a different color if you don't have this type of fancy stitch marker. So we're going to single crochet in the next stitch. This is going to be the first stitch of round five. So go ahead and mark that stitch. Then in the next stitch, we're going to put two single crochets. In the next stitch, one single crochet. In the next stitch, two single crochets. In the next stitch, one single crochet. Then the next one, two single crochets. And that's going to be your repeat all the way around. One, two, one, two. So please repeat this till you get around to that marked stitch and you're going to stop at the stitch before the marked stitch. And I'll meet back up with you at the end of this round. At the end of round five, we have 36 single crochets. For round six, we're going to take out our stitch marker place a stitch, a single crochet, into that stitch, return our stitch marker to mark the first stitch of round six, and this round we're going to put one single crochet into each stitch around. So we're not increasing on this round. It's going to be one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So at the end of round, six, we're still going to have 36 stitches. I will meet back up with you at the end of round six. I'm at the end of round six. We still have 36 stitches. To start round seven, 
We're going to remove our stitch marker and we're going to single in the next two stitches. So one and replace our stitch marker. Two. And then two singles in the next stitch. One single in the next two stitches. So one, two, and two singles in the next stitch. One, two. So do that one more time. One single in the next two stitches. One, two, and then two singles in the next. One, and two. So that's the repeat. One, one, and two. Please repeat this all the way around and I'll meet back up with you at the end of the round. At the end of round seven, we now have 48 stitches. To start round eight, we're gonna remove our stitch marker, place one single crochet into that next stitch, replace the stitch marker, And we're going to continue with one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. So round eight, we do not increase. We just put one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So we get back to the beginning. So we will still remain with 48 stitches. We're just putting one single crochet into each stitch. So please continue doing this and I will meet back up with you at the end of the round. I'm at the end of round eight. We still have 48 stitches. To start round nine, we're gonna go ahead and take that stitch marker out and single crochet in the next stitch. Place the stitch marker to mark the first stitch. And then we're gonna single in the next two stitches for a total of three stitches. And then two singles in the next stitch. And we're going to repeat that. So single in the next three stitches. One, two, three, and two singles in the next. One, so let's go over that one more time. One single in the next three stitches. One, two, and three. Then we're going to put two singles in the next stitch. One, two. And that's the repeat all the way around. One, 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 and two. So please continue this all the way around to get back to the beginning and I'll meet back up with you at the end of the round. I'm at the end of round nine. We now have 60 single crochets. To start round 10, move that stitch marker, single in that next stitch, replace the stitch marker to mark the beginning of round 10, and we're gonna single in each stitch around. Again, we're not increasing on round 10, we're just singling one in each stitch. So continue placing one single crochet into each stitch all the way around, and I'll meet back up with you at the end of the round. I'm at the end of round 10, we have still have 60 stitches, we're going to start round 11, remove the stitch marker, single in the next stitch, and we're going to go ahead and replace that stitch marker to mark the beginning of the round. We're going to single in the next three stitches for a total of four stitches. One, two, 
two, three, four. Then we're going to single, put two singles in the next stitch. One and two. And we're going to repeat that. So we're going to go single in the next four stitches. One, two, three, and four. Then two singles in the next. One, two, and we're going to do that one more time. Single in the next four stitches. One, two, three, and four. And two singles in the next. One, and two. So that is your repeat all the way around. One single, one single, one single, one single then two singles. Please repeat this all the way around and I'll meet back up with you at the end of the round. I'm at the end of round 11. We now have 72 single crochets. For rounds 12 through rounds 47, you're going to continue with one single crochet in each stitch. So we're going to be no more increasing we're just going to do one single crochet in each stitch. Don't forget to move your stitch marker up for each round. So let's single the next stitch, replace our stitch marker, and we're going to do one single crochet into each stitch all the way around for round 12. And we're going to repeat that same round till we get to round. 47. So once we get to round 47, do not fasten off and I will meet back up with you at the end of round 47. I'm at the end of round 47. We still have 72 stitches. To start round 48, we're going to go ahead and remove our stitch marker and place one single crochet into that first stitch and place the, replace the stitch marker back into that first stitch and we're going to single crochet into the next 70 stitches leaving the last two stitches unworked and we're going to turn our work and we're going to start working in rows for row 48 through row 59. So we're just going to place one single crochet into the next 70 stitches, so for a total of 70 stitches, so including that first stitch that you made, leaving the last two stitches unworked. So I will meet back up with you at the end of this row. At the end of row 48, we have 70 stitches. I'm going to chain one and turn the work. And single crochet across the row for row 49 back to the marked stitch. And that will give us 70 stitches in row 49 as well. I will meet back up with you at the end of row 49. Made it all the way around to the mark stitch. We're going to go ahead and remove that stitch marker because we're not going to need it right now. Now for rounds 50 through 59 we're just going to repeat round 49. So it's going to be a chain one, turn the work, and one single crochet into each stitch all the way around. Your stitch count will remain the same, which will be 70. 
I will meet back up with you at the end of round 59. I'm at the end of row 49. We still have 70 stitches. We're going to go ahead and fasten off. And we're going to pick up our pip squeak yarn now. And we're going to join that. First turn our work. And then we're going to join it to the first single crochet where we just fastened off. So let's get a slip knot on our hook. Join it into that first single crochet. Join it with a slip stitch. Chain one, and we're going to put two single crochets right back into that same stitch that we just slip stitched into. And then we're going to put one single crochet into each stitch all the way across. When we get to the end of the row, you're going to put three single crochets into the corner. And then we're going to start working along the ends of the rows because so we're going to make this, we're going to start working in a round for the collar. So when we get to the corner, or the end of this row, I'll meet back up with you. I'm at the end of the row, and I've got one stitch left, and I'm going to place three single crochets into that stitch. It's one, two, and three to go around the corner. I'm going to turn the work, and we're going to work in the ends of the rows here. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. nine and ten right in those ends of those rows just like that and then we have the two unworked stitches right here and that is from round 48 I just go ahead and put a single in each stitch And then work up the ends of these rows here. And since we did 10 in these rows, we're going to do 10 up here till we get to that last stitch. And we're going to put two single crochets up in here, up into this last stitch. And then we can slip stitch to join. And we're going to do, we're going to repeat the round. We're going to do one more round. So I'll meet back up with you when we get to the end right here. I'm at the end of the row and I'm going to make that slip stitch into the top of that first single crochet. Now with this kind of yarn, um, it's almost more of feeling for where your stitches are and kind of knowing where they are versus being able to see them. So if you're having difficulty seeing where the stitches are, knowing where they are to put the second round in, you can just end after the first round and not put the second round on at all. But if you want to put the second round on, chain one and go right back into the same stitch you just slip stitched into and single crochet two times. So one and two and then just put one single crochet into each stitch around. I 
that it's more or less being able to feel where the stitches are. If you've worked with this yarn before, you might already have an idea of where those stitches are to be able to put them in. And it's okay if you get one or two more stitches or if you're short a stitch. This yarn is really forgiving when it comes to that. So you don't have to really be too concerned about being absolutely precise. So if you want to go ahead and give it a try to put on that second round, go for it. But I will meet back up with you at the end of this round. Just make sure that you try to put your three single crochets in the corner to make the corner round or get as close to the center of that corner as you can so that you got a rounded corner. I made it all the way back around. I just slip stitched and I'm going to fasten off here. So let me grab my scissors. And just gotta weave that little tail in. And it will be all done. So let's just back down the camera. Slide my laptop out of the way there. And I'll see if I can get this all on camera for you. Just hold on one moment. So here is the completed little cuddle sack. I just, or cuddle bunting. We just need to weave in my end right there. So if you like this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to ring that bell. Thanks for watching and happy crocheting. Bye-bye.